So today I wanted to tell you guys a fun story that I, my friends have heard over and over and over again. And so for the few of my friends that actually watch my channel, uh, you guys might want to tune out because I'm sure you've heard the story ad nauseum, I've been told. But because it's such a wild story, I thought it was a great story to share on YouTube. So once upon a time, Kelly moved from Northern California to LA. Now the the locations where, that I'm used to in NorCal are either rural California to uh, less rural Bay Area type areas. And generally speaking, both of those areas are fairly, I don't want to say low in crime because the Bay Area does have crime, but I didn't, I, I was in the nicer, maybe like middle to upper middle class area of the Bay Area when I was there, uh, you might say. So I didn't actually have to deal with this issue. But in LA, if you ever visit, you will find that like Washington, D.C. and other major cities that are rampant with homelessness and crime, you will find that pickpocketing is a thing that happens. So today I'm going to tell you the story of what happened to me when I had somebody take my wallet right out of my purse and walk off with it. So before I get started, please like this video, subscribe to the channel, ring the bell to get notifications, and comment below what you guys think of this story, and uh, if you think that I am a little bit crazy, because I think by the end of the story, you're going to think I'm crazy. Uh, spoiler, I got the wallet back, but you'll have to wait until the end to find out how. So, uh, so I moved from NorCal to LA, and first of all, everybody's like, oh my gosh, you're going to get a huge culture shock. You're going to, you know, and most of the time when people say that, they mean, oh, it's going to be a pretty multicultural, blah, blah, blah. And I'm used to multicultural, like the Bay Area and surrounding areas. And so I'm not unfamiliar with like a multicultural, very diverse selection of people around. But the Bay Area is very much Asians, Indians, where I was living uh, off and on was called Little Afghanistan, and some people call it Little Calcutta now. So it's much more of like a Middle Eastern, Asian type of demographic. But you move to LA, and the part of LA I was in was very heavily Jewish, very much Italian, a lot of members of the black community down there where I was at. So much diff it definitely was a little bit of a culture shock, but not in the way that people think. Uh, I'm not, I wasn't, it wasn't as, uh, very, as heavily Asian, I guess, as I was expecting. So you, you've got that interesting demographic. And then on top of that, regardless of race, you've got the ever present homeless problem, which you guys probably have heard people talk about the homeless problem, the homelessness problem in LA and surrounding areas and in California just in general. And you probably think, oh, it's overblown. No, it's 100% worse than you might think, especially when you live near an overpass or anything like that. And if you get into downtown LA, don't even like, it's, it's really bad. It's third world country. Like you are stepping over barf puddles in LA in the nice area. I wasn't living in a bad area of town and I was still dealing with homeless guys throwing pizzas out in the street. It was crazy. Uh, you know, an encampment, you know, setting up right outside my driveway to get into my parking garage. It's insane. But anyway, so I've been in LA at this point for about three weeks. So I'm still very new. I have not, I hadn't lived in the city for a while and I certainly had never lived in Southern California and certainly never in LA. Uh, so I'd been living in an Airbnb and today, um, this particular day, I was going to go sign for my apartment. Oh my gosh. I had all kinds of important things in my wallet that day. Very, very important things that one might bring to sign for an apartment. And uh, before I'm, I'm, you know, stressed out, I'm getting in the, I'm in the process of going, going to sign for this apartment. I think we had the day off from work because it was a Friday. And I went to the store. I was, I was like running errands on top of this before I went to the apartment to sign for it. And I went to the store to pick some stuff up because I needed some things like apartment related things. And I'm in the store and I'm on the phone with my mom talking to her as I'm looking at some stuff that I might grab for my apartment. Oh my gosh, this is so embarrassing. I can't even. I'm not paying attention. My wallet is in my purse 
and my purse is in the child's seat in the cart, right? Which is the way I've shopped up to this point, the same way I've shopped ever since I was shopping on my own and had a purse. I'd always put it in the child's seat in the cart. And it was open, of course, because uh, I had my phone out and I had left it open from taking my phone out of the purse and I had turned slightly away from the purse and wasn't paying that much attention. I would never have even noticed this had happened, but my purse happened to have a little chain link um, attachment to it and I heard that make that sound, like somebody had bumped it. And so I turned and there was this old guy standing next to me, probably about 5'8", very, very old. Uh, I wouldn't say like old as in decrepit, but I would say probably, it's it's hard to tell. It's It's hard to tell because there's like, there's 60, 65 years old that's well taken care of. And then there's 60, 65 years old that is, you know, is living under an overpass and probably doing drugs. And I would suggest that this guy was probably in that age range, but, you know, not having been taken care of, probably looked a lot older. Um, he could have been, you know, younger, but like I said, he looked, he was a homeless guy, obviously, but, you know, poorly dressed, uh, scraggly beard, scraggly hair, all that kind of stuff. And he was standing really close to me and I thought, this is weird. Uh, but then he just kind of looked at me and walked off. And I was like, that was really weird. And then I looked down and I realized that my purse had been tampered with. And I thought, oh, no, he stole my iPad because I had my iPad in my purse. And I thought, oh, man, he stole my iPad. And I thought, you know what? If he stole my iPad, it's replaceable. It's not, it's not that big of a deal. But my iPad was still there. So what do you guys think he took? took my wallet. He took my wallet with all the important things I had in there to sign for my apartment. You know, hindsight, that could have been so much worse than it ended up being because I would not have been able to sign for that apartment. I would have lost all my cards, everything, my driver's license, everything, everything. Yeah, it was bad. Immediately, I don't even, I don't want to say the word panic because Panic suggests that I, that there was no plan involved or that there was no purpose to my rage. And so I, I'm saying on the phone, and I'm still on the phone with my mom. I'm saying, he, he took my wallet. He stole my wallet. And at this point, I basically blacked out. And by blacked out, I mean, like, I couldn't, I don't remember. My mom says she was yelling on the other end of the phone or like, at least excitedly talking loudly, like what's going on. I don't remember anything. I don't remember hearing her. It was like the phone was dead, everything. It was tunnel vision. I turned around. I had seen the guy walk off and like which way he had turned before I realized what had happened. And it was like I said, tunnel vision, tunnel vision. I went crazy in my head and I am I'm in a nice dress like I'm gonna go sign for an apartment I'm in a dress I'm in heels I'm in like fancied up I start running I leave my purse with my iPad in, it, in the car and I start going after this guy and I he's he's turning down another aisle and to this day I've shopped at that store so many times after that that was like my main grocery store but I could tell you exactly which aisle it was and exactly what was there and where it was and he, I got to the end of my aisle, turned the direction where he was in, saw him going down another aisle. And I don't really know what my plan was. I, I did not have a plan. I was just very animalistic reacting. And <laughs> I yell out in this crowded store with all these fancy schmancy, you know, LA people. He took my wallet. He stole my wallet. I said it once. I can't remember if I said he took or he stole, but he it was in that vein of of communication. And he stops. He takes my wallet out of his coat. He puts it down on the it was a shelf about roughly it may be a little bit shorter than me, probably at my shoulder. And it it was it had like uh, tortillas like those bags of tortillas in it. He puts my wallet down there and he walks off. And so then I continue my pursuit 
and I grab the wallet and I stop and I go, I'm going through it to see what's in it. The funny thing is, I think I had like 60 bucks in it. I'm like, I would have given him the 60 if that's all he wanted. So I got the wallet, everything was still there. He hadn't had time to go through it. Even the cash was still there, unbelievably. Yeah, that was how I got my wallet back. Now, let me just say this again. I finally, I still, this entire time, had my phone up to my ear <laughs> talking to my mom, but I still couldn't hear her because I was still in tunnel vision. So I walked back and with my phone still at my ear, <laughs> walk back and I finally start hearing her again I say I got it back I got the wallet back and there was like some workers there who were like are you okay are you okay and there's a couple people asking me if I'm okay and I'm still like borderline hysterical I'm I'm but uh, but I was trying to I did indicate I think I indicated to people nobody touched me or anything like that blah 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 so problem is when I get angry and I've never felt that adrenaline in my life and I hope I never feel it again although it was thrilling, but I am not an adrenaline junkie. And when I had to come off of that adrenaline high, my gosh, I almost puked. It was like, again, when you go into tunnel vision and you go into rage, you go into white rage, it took me forever to recover from that. And uh, so humorously enough, I'm still dressed up. I went back to the Airbnb, bald a little bit, had to readjust my makeup. And uh, then I went and signed for the apartment. And the next day I moved into my apartment and I went to work and I didn't tell anybody about it because <laughs> I didn't want people to scold me uh, for being so careless with my wallet. I'm like, I don't need somebody to tell me that was dumb to you know, put myself in that vulnerable position. I didn't need somebody to tell me that. I already knew. And it really does get irritating when people after the fact are like, Kelly, let's rub this in a hundred times more. I did not need that. I already knew. I, like I said, the the coming off that adrenaline high from being enraged and having the wherewithal to chase down the guy and shout at the guy and get the wallet back was more than enough punishment I didn't need anymore. So needless to say, I never put my purse in the child seat in the shopping cart. I always carry my purse very carefully and I suggest all of you do the same. If you are a woman living in the city or in the middle of nowhere, you have to be on your guard for this kind of stuff. And even if you're a guy, you do too. But it's a lot harder, I think, to get money off of a guy than it is a woman because women walk around with their money in bags, literally. It's so easy to just grab it. Um and a guy might, maybe I'm stereotyping, but, you know, guys usually carry their wallets in their pockets and they have their hands in their pockets. And so it's a lot harder to get um, so a guy's wallet off of him than than perhaps it would be a woman when uh, it's just easier to just grab the purse right out of <laughs> or grab whatever's in the purse and left open. So that is my wonderful, exciting story about the time that I had my wallet stolen. Uh, so this is basically the purpose of this video is to say that I am ridiculous. And second, also just, I, I've kind of become like the person that is about security in the store and don't, don't, you know, walk with your purse open, be aware of your surroundings. If there's a guy looking at you, he's not necessarily looking at you. He's looking at your wallet or your purse. So, you know, that's, this is just my way of telling any woman who watches this channel or any guy who knows a woman who watches this channel or any guy who may be a little bit more careless with their wallet than they ought to be. Uh, be careful with your wallet and uh, don't allow people to take stuff from you because it does. It, it, I felt like I was violated. Nobody touched me, but I felt like I was physically violated by him grabbing my stuff out of my purse and walking off with it. And I never want to feel like that again, and I haven't. And you know why? Because I don't leave my purse out available for people to grab. So that's my story. Uh, if you guys like this video and want more LA crazy homeless person experiences, because I have plenty, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, ring the bell to get notifications, and comment below what kind of story you guys want to hear next. And uh, I will talk to you guys on the next video.